I don't know what happened. I was here for a moment and then I was somewhere else. Somewhere different. I can't remember seeing more than flashes. The light. I remember the light. And now my eyes are seared. Like all things, I, I too can be fixed. I will be. I have to get back to the vehicle. I must. Yes, yes. I only wish I had recorded or found a way to understand exactly what happened. But I think it's beyond me. At least for now, that might not be that way forever. <sighs> yes, sleep first, and then the van. Kia ora, guys, gals, and legionnaires. Rykon here, and welcome back to Let's Roleplay Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead, Bran's Tale. We are here with Bran. Bran, whose eyes have been seared. Yes, our poor fellow had a interesting encounter with a resonance cascade. And yes, I only realized just after finishing the last episode that it wasn't referenced to Half-Life. <laughs> I don't know why I missed that for such a long time. But yeah, so something happened in there. And well, now we can't see. I'm going to hope that that doesn't last forever, though. We have closed the door, uh, we are going to turn off our night vision, and we are going to attempt to sleep. We seem to sleep. Oh, and our sight returns. Fantastic. We don't even have to make it back towards the van. Brilliant. It was a limited time that that was affecting us. But uh, there might be other things still affecting us for, you know, other reasons. Namely, walking through a portal through which we were not invited. Yeah there are repercussions however we'll see if those repercussions are still around when our man wakes and well just like that we do awake and we seem okay brand you you seem fine you don't have the shakes anymore maybe we're okay we seem to be let's hope we are we're gonna go with that and we my friend, we are going to go and see if we can get some of these CBMs installed, among other things. Mostly just the power. And I believe that is where. Where, oh where. It is going to be right there. Okay, okay. So let's see. Yep, that should be easy enough for us to get to. Let's make our way back through into this space here and, well, nothing's changed. The portals are still open, still shimmering. Let's slurp on our chocolate milk and make our way down. Bizarre. Very bizarre. I think the room we are looking for is just over here. Yes. Excellent. Down we go. We even have our nurse bot there to assist us. Which we are, uh, well, we very well might need. Let's close up that door for now. And we'll see if we can override the controls here. Unlock. Yes, thank you very much. We'll shut down. We are uh, now have access to the operating theatre. We've got another lab jet. Oh, shoot. Nurse bot. That was a complete accident. <laughs> Please just, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm very sorry. It, it, they, you were trying to give me a checkup, and I just imagined that, yeah. It's slowly coming towards Bran, and Bran just pushing it out, you know, out the way. He's busy. He's got lots of things to do. <laughs> Let's see. We are going to attempt to install uh, the Railgun CBM. Yes, anesthetic required. We shouldn't require any. But uh, yeah, there we go. Ah, uh, yeah, look, max power already reached. So there is a limit. <laughs> and we are at that limit. That's that's fair. That's fair. Let's go ahead and install the Railgun CBM, though. Yes, please. Don't fail. Let's see if we can get this to work out for us. 
waiting, waiting, waiting. The nurse bot scans its surroundings and we have successfully installed that. Uh, now, that is our left and our right arm. We can see right arm, right hand. It is stitching us back up as we do. And there we go. We awake and we now have a railgun CBM. Let's have a look at that. So it's one kilojoule to activate it. That's pretty good. And so what that should do for us is that it generates an EM field in our arms and it doubles the range and damage of thrown iron and steel objects at the cost of one power per throw, causing them to leave a trail of electricity that can deal additional damage. So as to what the best thing to throw with this would be, I'm not sure, but it's really not a massive amount of power. So that's kind of cool. Um, we are going to make this tea, I believe. I don't think we have anything else. That I'm having a look at the moment. Um, I know tea will be something, but actually no, it doesn't look like it is. Can I reassign you to tea? Ethanol burner. Please enter a new letter. Uh, we'll make the ethanol burner that. Invalid, apparently. Um, can I make you that? Cool. Let's, <laughs> let's try that again. Um, we are going to reassign you to T. Ethanol burner. Enter new letter. We're going to make it underscore. And that didn't work at all. So where is our ethanol burner here? Because I can't see it for life of me. <laughs> maybe a capital T for the railgun again I can't see it on anything specific <laughs> T alloy plating okay so even though our passives our passives have them for some screwed up reason even though we can't activate them they're passive so why do they have letters <laughs> that's just frustrating okay I, are you sure I cannot reassign you I don't seem to be able to. Reassign. Oh, right. I understand what's going on now. Railgun. Okay, now I'll change that to T. Okay, okay, there we go. We got there in the end. Well, I hope you all enjoyed watching me do that. <laughs> um, so, I don't know if we can disassemble the power storage CBMs. I don't think we can. Because uh, there really isn't much else that we can do with it. Did I... Did I sleep with the combat armor turned on? Surely we didn't. Otherwise, that would have been a very slow drain of power. I'd be very impressed if that's the case. Um, yeah, okay. Getting distracted here. Getting distracted. I don't think there's anything that we can do with it. No, we can disassemble it. We heard screams of pain. Stop disassembly. No. We'll ignore those screams of pain. Um, right. We drop them on the blue tile floor. What do we have there? Light battery, among other things. Cool. We'll go ahead and take all of that. Now, as for our friends in here, what are we going to do with them? Well, we do have that one scrambler grenade. I don't know if the bloody scrambler is going to work, though, because we've been having issues with grenades lately. So, who knows? Could work, might not work. I guess we'll maybe find that out together, won't we? And I gotta think, hmm, how long do we get with a scrambler grenade? Because look, these things really aren't a threat to us. At least I don't see them as being a threat. Short time before backup systems kick in. We're going to experiment here. Let's go ahead. I, I honestly, I don't think, I think we're going to want to have this door open. But I don't think we want to open all the other doors. So let's just go and activate our pickaxe and start chipping away at this door. Uh, let's keep on doing that. Ignore. Password unrecognized. Ignore. We are mining away, just chipping away at the door. Seeing if we can remove it. And whoever you are beneath that... Uh, thing, well, it might just be your lucky day. We'll see, though. I also don't know if we want to try and throw this thing. I just, I'm nervous about us getting damaged by this as well. You know, I, yeah. Okay, so we have someone following us. Let's start running. While we're running, we'll start 
attempting to wield the scrambler grenade. I guess this is where we're doing it. Activate the scrambler. Throw the scrambler right here. Okay. Did you Okay, I think it's I think it's not hostile. Aware of our presence and friendly. Can you understand me? Ah I don't think I can and it's and it's hostile again. God damn it! <laughs> Shit <laughs> Son of a bitch. Yeah. Okay. Let's get back over here. Come on. I mean I we had one shot, one opportunity. And, uh, yeah, we screwed it up. We screwed it up. I I think we had to do it here. I I was afraid of us hitting ourselves. That is a fear of mine. The duffel bag is ripped. Now you're dead. Full cyborg. Cannot operate. Well, I guess that's that. We tried. <laughs> we tried. Um, okay. All right. We're going to leave the nurse bot in here. Um, we, there is someone else in here that we can potentially try to assist, but um, we can't do it at the moment. Why does it hurt? Rebooting. Yeah, we'll leave them to do their thing. And at this stage, we are going to be leaving this place behind. So let's go drag that over to here, fold the vehicle back up, and we want to start dragging the items upstairs and you know we'll just we'll keep on dragging them and oh boy look at that it is proper winter now it is winter morning look at that snow on the ground okay so we have a few things to get positioned obviously we can't haul the items into here uh, we'll go ahead and grab the folded foldertron first, though, just so that we have that back. The autoclave we are going to install in the vehicle. Um, all this ammunition and the rest, I am going to go get organized. And so with that, I will be with you once we have all of that stuff inside the vehicle. Okay, so we've pretty much moved everything across for now. Um, <clears throat> we have to install the autoclave. Autolave, autoclave, whatever we want to call it. Um, and as to where we are going to install this thing, I don't know where we are going to be able to. Because we can put a super alloy coating down. How nice. Um, yeah, so, let's see. What do we want to go with here? I think it has to be somewhere that isn't currently occupied. Um, and pretty much everywhere is going to be occupied in this space here. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, I don't know how much space it needs, really. Uh, we can go ahead and just start wielding it. It's a very, it's a very large thing. Uh, honestly, I'm thinking this space here, maybe. Uh, yeah, I just, I don't know, I don't know what the rules are when it comes to installing this thing. Um, we might have to get rid of one of our storage units that we have currently going at the moment. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's not gonna be easy to do. We have a lot of stuff still, even though I did reduce. I mean, actually, we're not using this space here at all, which is just to the side. Yeah, so it's that trunk just to the side of us. Okay, so let's have a look and see if we can do anything with that. It doesn't mean you have to squeeze past it in the future, which, okay, I guess that's a thing that we just need to deal with. Remove the floor trunk. And let's see, can we install it? Ah, no. The reason we can't install it is because we actually have to turn it into a portable version of it. Um, which I think that's something that we can do. Uh, we're very hungry at the moment. Is there anything we can just snack on? Ooh, some delicious lard. <laughs> um, let's just have some cold mushroom soup for now. Where is our cold mushroom soup? Here we go delicious to slip it down it's just it's just fuel right now brand it's just fuel <laughs> okay so let's see um let's actually have a look at the item real quick so we can use it to craft a mountable autoclave so that's what we need to make here let's search for mount mountable autoclave great we just need some power converters and uh and the autoclave itself 
Okay, let's do it. 30 minutes. Easy done. Let's use the ones that are on our person. And we're smashing through the creation of this. Bam. There we go. Excellent. So where can we install it? Uh, perhaps anywhere. If we can do it over here by the science station, the chemistry set and everything like that, that'd be cool. Doesn't look like we can. That's fine. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have to remove some stuff to be able to do it. That's that's okay. We'll get rid of this floor trunk then. I guess that's just the way it's going to be. It's annoying, but it's okay. Autoclave. There we go. It is useful for sterilizing things like CBMs. Examine the tile to use the autoclave. You can store items here. Illuminated items in this space will not illuminate nearby squares. When turned on, this device drains power from the vehicle's battery. So I'm guessing we place things inside of it and then they get cleaned. I still feel like we need something else for it to actually work. Why do we have zero water? It's been raining. We've got zero water. So somehow all of our water drained. Don't know how, but it did. Interesting. Can we move past you? No, but we can kind of slip through this gap here. That's okay. Activate autoclave. 1.5 hours. Examine vehicle. Okay, so can I drop things on this space then? I guess we can. Okay, so let's have a look at our CBMs, which I think are just by the door, actually. Yes, so... Soporific induction. <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, all the other power storage, we can't really do anything with them. The alloy arms, we can. Do I? Do we have alloy arms? We've got alloy placing on our legs, and I thought we had it on our chest. No, we only have it on our legs. Okay. Well, that's that. Okay, so let's try and drop them onto that square boom boom the autoclave is full so it fell onto the ground well did we get anything in there get items so you can put one thing in at a time okay good to know uh right do we have the power <laughs> look at our power currently um does the vehicle have the power to make this thing work I and mean, we've got a lot of power in there surely that's enough surely that's enough power this is when we find out that it really isn't enough uh activate you need eight charges of water in the tanks for the autoclave to run. Okay, very interesting, but also really frustrating because we had a ridiculous amount of water in here just recently. So I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna have to leave that in there and we'll leave this other thing of alloy. Actually, we can carry this with us. It's not really going to affect us that greatly. We have some MREs with us, uh, which is good. We are going to be activating those uh, at some point in the not too distant future. Yeah, see, even our clean water is gone as well. It's weird. It's just got rid of all of it. Uh, we're going to be going on an adventure. Yes, we are. We're going to drop off those lenses first, but we're going to be going on an adventure over towards the strange temple. Yes, I believe there is some kind of a connection between the portals that we saw there and this temple beneath Waterford. Yeah. Now, for us to get down into the temple, we are going to need to dig. Uh, we have our pickaxe for that, and I believe to make the staircase, we need a long rope of some kind. Finding a long rope might be a little bit more effort than we are wanting to take right now. And one way that we can get a long rope, because from the memory, from when I was sorting through everything, I didn't see any long ropes. But we can get one by adjusting the seat. Uh, this seat up here has a five point harness. If we remove this, we should be able to get a long rope back. Um, yes, long rope, and it should be just beneath us here. Excellent, we have ourselves a long rope. The rest of it is just gonna be planks, and I think if we grab ourselves an ax or a hatchet, we should be good to go in that regard. So let's just have a look around and see if we have anything in the way of an axe. We have a fire axe. That will do the job just fine. The fire axe was a great friend of ours for a long time and will continue to be a good friend. Wow, we're not going to get any rain for a while because it's winter. It's just going to be snowing more often than not. Do we get any rain in winter in Cataclysm? I can't remember. Okay, let's go ahead and use our night vision again. It looks very bright with the snow. <laughs> Just because of how white it is out here. Damn. 
I wonder if the water freezes over in winter. I am not sure about that. We don't seem to have much trouble walking around in here. And there's a chihuahua. Well, hi, chihuahua. And we're by the strange temple. Can I call out to the chihuahua? It's muffled. <laughs> I kind of really want to make friends with that chihuahua. Hmm. We could try. For now, we're going to just, just remain focused on our goal. Um, so, let's see. Let's search for stairs. Stair. Dig down stairs. Okay, so we need eight logs or eight planks. Okay. Let's get a chopping. And hope that no one intervenes in this. Fire axe, we are going to chop down a tree. This one here. Ignore. Chihuahua, please don't attack me. Okay, we're doing good. 80%. And timber. The tree has fallen. Fantastic. So, we need eight logs. Um, you, know, you know, the planks are probably actually going to be easier here, I think. So let's see if we can... Um, cannot mine here. Fire axe. Uh, chop a tree trunk into logs. That's what we're wanting to do. And then if we turn those logs into planks, I think this is going to be the fastest way for us to do this. But we'll find out soon enough. Okay, finish chopping wood. We got two logs out of that. Hmm. Yeah, maybe our skill isn't great. Cut log into planks. Uh, we need to be standing on it, I believe. Okay. Let's see how we do here. We're after eight, remember? Okay, ten planks. Frickin' brilliant, Bran. Excellent work. Okay, we'll bring it over towards here. So, camp. I don't think we can actually mine. Let's say stair. Right, what are we missing? Dig downstairs. Um. Okay, I guess we need the entrenching tool more than the pickaxe in this instance. Well, we'll go and get it. It's not that far for us to go. Entrenching tool is what we're after. Um, we've spotted a zombie apparently, so they are out here. Okay, vehicle. Let's see, where are you? We are looking up in the top left hand corner and we are looking for a entrenching tool. There it is, excellent. Done and dusted. Okay. I don't know what we're going to find down here this time. I actually have no idea where that zombie is as well. Apparently it died though. Well, if it gets too close towards our vehicle, it's definitely going to die. If that trial was still around after we've done all this work here, we might try and see if we can win it over. Alright. Searching for stairs yet again. Dig down stair. Yes. Can we dig down stair? Oh, okay. We need to turn on our light. That means we're going to attract anything that's in the neighborhood. So, let's just be ready for that. We have our sword out. We're good in that regard. Stair. I want to see if we can dig on... Yeah, okay. That's to be expected. It was actually trying to show us where we can dig. Just to the left of us then. And we are getting to work. And I actually don't know how long the construction is going to take. It's not giving us a percentage. We can hear shuffling. Stop construction? No. Skeletal Juggernaut! Well, it's been a while since we've seen one of you. Yes, let's go ahead and stop that. It's been ages since we've seen one of them. Well, we'll go ahead and get prepared for this fight. Because I'm sure it's going to be bringing a fight. It can see us now. We have put on our shock absorbers. And let's go ahead and activate our armor. As we step towards the skeletal juggernaut. It tries to uh, reach out towards us. We send it reeling backwards in the snow. Jumping atop its chest. We start to slash again and again. Before it sends us reeling back through the air. Tumbling. We get back to our feet. And we start pacing towards the creature. Slash after slash, slowly bringing it to its knees. We have the thing reeling backwards with each attack. Our strength keeps throwing the creature further and further back. Until finally, it reaches down towards the water. We have it on its last legs, but it still has some strength left in it yet. Oh, come on. 
closer still to the water. With its back against the swamp, we finally kill the juggernaut. Okay. Well, that's that. Let's go ahead and just uh, catch our breath. See if there's anyone else big and hulking hanging out here in the forest. Okay, we were 4% of the way through. Wow. Cancel construction? Uh, no. We just want to uh, go ahead and activate our flashlight and uh, definitely power down the suit, which I'm probably going to forget to do again before long. All right, let's get to work. 4%. Jeez, this is going to take a while. Dangerously close. Stop construction. Yep, sure. So... I guess I'm not surprised. We are the only light source out here. Something was destroyed then. I think it could have been our backpack. Quite possibly. We aren't wearing one at the moment. So, yep, that makes me believe that was it. Okay, so we lost a few things there. <laughs> uh, we're okay. We're okay. Let's keep it rolling. Getting a little bit further along. We were on 5% then. Yeah, I mean, we are literally digging a staircase down underground. So, it's bound to take a while. And I tell you what, we are going to advance throughout this and, well, because there's a chance that we could run into some trouble along the way, we're going to do a fast forward rather than an actual skip altogether. So I will see you all on the other side. Okay, and in the end I actually did decide to just skip through that because we only really had one zombie come and cause us a little bit of trouble and there was a Dermatic flying around but really they didn't do much to cause us... Uh, too much stress. We are going to have a drink before we go down and um, we did have some other food with us so we could look at having some of that before we go down. Um, let's see, we are going to need to disassemble you with all the other items that now drop down onto the floor. So we have the chili and beans, uh, we can use the heat pack that should be with these to, um, to heat stuff up. So on the dirt we are going to activate the heat pack and we're going to heat up our entree. So let's go ahead and have a munch of that. Delicious. Very, very nice. We've got a cracker. We can have that with some of the cheese spread. Okay. Not a half bad meal. Have some of that water. Wash it all down. And then we're going to climb down effectively this ladder. So we've kind of mined down. We have a ladder here. And um, we're going to go put our flashlight on first of all. I have no idea what we're going to find down here. Let's take a deep breath. And... You know what, before we go any further, let's actually eat some of the stuff that's up here. Just to give us a little bit of extra power. Yeah, we'll eat the long stick and we'll eat those two planks. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem we can eat logs, but you know, you do what you can. Let's pop downstairs, Bran. Okay. And it looks like we have another collector's vault, or at least it seems like that. Uh, we are surrounded by strange things. A broken card reader, a willow tree, a resin cage, a mound of clay with some hot air. A hot air around here quite a bit. We have a radiation platform. That doesn't sound great. Is it radiation protection? But yeah, we also have a conveyor belt. There's a lot of hot air around here at the moment, and we might notice our temperature rising, so I'm going to put thermal dissipation on just in advance. Okay, so looking around, we can't move. Okay, we can move here. We hear the grinding and shifting of rock. Looking further ahead, we can see a tarp lean to. Radio controls, a railroad, railroad track, and some heavy machinery. We move forward further. Um, so, this radiation, radiation platform, movement cost on there is 5,000. So, walking across that would take a very long time. Um, I'm also intrigued just what the general radiation around here is like. So, let's see if we can... Uh, what are we... The dosimeter. Okay, our radiation level is zero. Let's not walk on it. We can walk onto the lean-to. What is in this pump? It's a gasoline pump. It's out of order. Not surprised. Uh, we've got painted wax floor there. We have a dark pedestal. A dark pedestal. Okay. I wouldn't mind disassembling you. Now, if you remember last time, we actually did find a plutonium bloody generator that we were able to kind of disassemble. There's an elderberry tree. And yeah, we are starting to get warm here. Holy crap, we are warm. 
that's a bit excessive. We have um, thermal dissipation on at the moment, right? Let's put internal climate control on as well. We have both of those on currently. Um, and our left and right arm are getting warm, apparently. That is an HV oil circuit breaker. Let's have a look at this again. Okay, we are still, <laughs> still, still quite warm. Um, and we're on unstable footing. Okay, neat. What are we standing on at the moment? We're standing on a rain gutter, apparently. Cool. This is a lightning arrester. And that's open air and a ledge. So we just fall if we go off the edge there. So let's maybe not do that. Um, I don't seem to be able to go in either of these directions. I kind of wanted to see what was going on over here, but we can't. So I guess that's, that's that. Okay. What is that? It is a wall. It's impassable. Okay. Well, I guess we're going this way instead. Are we still ridiculously hot? Yes, we are. That's great. Okay. We can go here. Can I flip the yellow switch? Yes, I can. I flipped it. Something happened. Uh, that's a root wall ahead of us. Um, and that's a, that's a Black Widow that's just attacking us. Let's activate our armor. I don't like being poisoned, which we currently are not. But we are very hot. Very, very hot. I would love to get to the dark pedestal. Use the electro hack? Yes. Um, oh god, we're scorching. I think we're going to, to die here. Why, why, why can't I stop it? Oh no, 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 come on. Come on. Oh, our power's gone. Our power's gone. I can't stop this. I can't stop this. This is, this... What the hell was that? <laughs> why can't you stop it once you start? That is ridiculous. We are so lucky to be alive. Okay, the way that I see that working in my mind is Bran was trying to interact with this thing. He broke out his electro hack, and then once he connected with it, he was effectively like stun locked. Like electricity surged throughout his body, and now we have no charge at all. That's great, that's fantastic. Let's turn on our um, metabolic interchange. I'm also going to turn the uh, internal furnace back on. Um, we shouldn't be using anything else that's actually using power. We've got internal climate control on. We are scorching at the moment, and our torso is being hurt. Yeah, this is not a good scenario. We just need to keep on moving at this stage. And I think we can. Uh, would you freaking look at that? It's connected to the lab. Or rather, it is, it's close enough that it surely is not a coincidence that the lab is here. In my mind, in terms of a story sense. And this. Yes. I think we have found something of a connection. Okay, but still, we need to try and find our way down. And that's going to be trying to go to the next stage. Um, right. I think we actually need to back out. We need to back out. We need to get power back. And we need to think this over. Can we step here? I think we can. Yes, okay, that's our way back up. Okay, we're now back on the surface. Let's deactivate our suit. Okay, we are currently scorching. Okay, everything hurts. We're at a good temperature now. Okay, all right, power's on its way back. Everything's still getting really, really hurt because we are still, we're still scorching <laughs> and, and there's nothing I can do about that. What I can do is activate our repair nanobots. It's kind of going to go against, um, it's going to be fighting against it right now, and we are already out of power. So what we're going to try and do is make our way across towards our vehicle. I'm going to deactivate our cranial flashlight. Okay, I'm just looking at everything that's going wrong with our body currently. Got a little bit of energy still. Let's make it back towards the road. Okay, we're good, we're good. Okay. I don't remember killing you. Or you. Bruised giant. Hemolinth stain? Okay. Um, our lasers must have done that. Okay, we've made it back inside of here. Now, what we need immediately is um, wherever it's stored, uh, the fertilizer. Because that's going to give us all the energy we need. Okay. All around search, fertilizer. 
Commercial fertilizer, fantastic. Okay, we're going to take one sack of you, please. Thank you. Uh, metabolic interchange should already be... Let's turn that off. Internal furnace. Okay, we are going to eat this thing. Should be in our inventory. It's currently frozen. No, this is going to give us the energy we need. Okay, we are back up on full. Um, we just need to wait a second, make sure that the energy has actually stabilized. Get our repair nanobots doing their job. It's going to use a lot of power. You can see it's using heaps, but there we go. We are now stable. Um, our temperature is still coming down. We are warm. So it would seem that that place is incredibly hot. So we need to be very, very careful going down there and we can't afford to take it you know, take our time. We're just going to have to rush through um, or at the very least try and get down to one of the lower levels because um, our thermal dissipation, our everything was not being able to offset that. That's uh, that's crazy. Okay, I think we're good though. I think we're good. Let's take another sack of commercial fertilizer just just in case. Um, I know we've, we've left stuff over there already uh, with our pack being destroyed. Um, so I'm going to see if I can just drop off some other things while we're here. But yeah, we definitely need to grab that uh, other fertilizer. Yep, we'll just take one for now. And uh, where are you at the moment? You are to the north, of course, with the other medical or rather chemical things. We just need to store... We could store the alloy plating just for now. Back where it belongs. Yeah. There's not much else that we can put away. Uh, we've dropped the pickaxe. We've got the entrenching tool with us. Yeah, I'm just a little bit worried if we go down there that we're just not going to have the carrying capacity to uh, to deal with this stuff. So we're gonna we're just gonna put some other things. I don't think we're gonna use the locksmith or the atomic lamp or the electro hack. Never again. Never again. Um, we'll drop off you antiseptic. Just pretty much anything that could be potentially obviously the commercial fertilizer is a a must but yeah okay i think we're good that was frightening that was very very frightening oh boy you know this many episodes in and we're still having moments where i'm pretty sure that it could just be all over the brand okay all right well we are going to go in with thermal dissipation on internal climate control we should be good at least for a little while we move down here we are going to start seeing that hot air we hear the shifting of stone but i think we can move through mostly okay so what do we have here a high gauge pipe we need to kind of try and get to this space here i'm not sure how we're going to do that just yet we might have to chop down a tree dive into th the water no so there's water beneath us. Okay. So we don't have a way around yet, but I think we can maybe try and chop down one of these trees, but at the same time, we're getting very hot. While I'm waiting here and thinking, we're okay. Um, it might be faster for us to just try and smash this transformer. Oh, wow. Huge explosion. I mean, yes, it's a freaking electricity transformer. <laughs> oh, Bran. Okay. All right. We have made it. Okay, now, we are very hot, and this is where most of the heat's been uh, coming from, these fire vents. Now, we can move through this without getting burned because of thermal dissipation, which is now turned on. Yeah, it prevents heat damage, so we're going to start running through here. We're feeling like we're getting very hot, but it does say that, the f the, it, yeah, it's hot, but it doesn't, it doesn't burn us exactly. <laughs> oh, great, fantastic, and it's flooding, so we need to start running. Um, run. We spot a sewer rat. Okay, we're underwater. Shizen. Okay, so here's what we can do. We have something called a respirator, which allows us to breathe underwater. We're going to go ahead and activate that. And then we can see that it's using a ridiculous amount of power. Okay. Can we make it? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Okay. Our power has nearly run out. We're moving as fast as we can. Just, just look at the move speed. That move speed's really good. We need to just keep on moving at this point. Get to dry land quick. I know, believe me, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. Oh, God. Holy crap. Our torso. 
Okay, we need to be very, 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 very quick here. Okay, the internal furnace is still turned on. That's good. We need to get repair nanobelts on right now. And we need to eat that fertilizer. Ignore. Okay, we have power. Our torso is starting to heal. We need to go below. I have no idea what's down here. Okay, so. To go over in Cataclysm, there are two ways that you can die. One is if your head reaches zero, and the other is if your torso reaches zero. Our torso was right on the edge of being completely destroyed there. Our lungs were filling with water. Our respirator was working, but we ran out of power. As you might expect would happen. We are very hot even down here. No, down here we're okay, so we can... We can take our time, I think. What is this room? Okay, it's one of these spaces. Well, at the very least, let's just make sure that we are recovering here. Okay, our stamina's on its way back up. We're starting to get hot again though. It seems to be unpredictable in this space. Temperatures fluctuate massively. Let's go start off with cyan, okay. Now, we know when we've done this, yeah, in the past, bad things have turned up. Stuff like Dermatix. Why that scenario back there was also bad was, I know it's just a rat, but even if it got one hit on our torso, that would have been enough. It would have just tunneled in there and finished us off. So, we've done Cyan. We're going to go and... I see, look, power's gone right back up again. Right back up. We need to put dissipation back on. I, I don't even think we need dissipation right now. I think, like, our eternal climate control is trying to work, but it's just it's unable to get there right now. Okay, so, we've used purple, and we have a, a giant cellar spider now, which is now dead. We're going to try check it. Okay, check it hasn't worked. Try check it again. No, we could go over to yellow. Okay, great. Dermatic. We're getting very, very hot again. And our power is just going down so much each turn. Okay. Dissipation is turned off for now. We just need to hit this thing. This is ridiculous. Come on. Come on. <sighs> okay. Just shoot. We'll just shoot at him. Of course we miss. Okay. And that's going to use up more power. Power is what we actually need to get out of here as well. We're scorching. The temperatures just keep on fluctuating so much. <sighs> this thing is having a hard time hitting us. But we are having a very hard time hitting it. Because the pain is getting to us. If we try to now activate our sensory dulling, it'll dull us to the point where we're going to start to overdose. Our dexterity, our strength is completely gone. The only thing I can think of is trying to get some kind of a shot in here. 33% is not... It's not enough. It's not enough. Okay. I don't know how to get out of the scenario. We are... Yeah. I, I, I don't... I, we can't hit anything here. The only thing I can think of is maybe turning our offensive defensive system on, but that uses a huge amount of power per turn, we'll be out of energy in no time at all. 10 kilojoules is actually a massive amount now. We could use the mini, mini flamethrower, try and set the thing on fire. We know that can at least hit. There we go, it's now on fire. <laughs> oh my god, this is ridiculous. It is uninjured, because of course it's flying. Okay, it's leaving us alone for now. We need to get our stamina back. But I'm also worried about waiting down here because, well, yeah, it's, it's not good for our health. I mean, right now it's not hot, but it's been incredibly hot recently <laughs> so 
I don't know. I don't know. I mean, let's just do a manual wait for now. Yeah, I know our torso is hurting. I know. We spotted the Dermatech. I, I realize that. Uh, we cannot get our stamina back. We can't catch our breath. Why can we not catch our breath? I'm afraid that if we go wait until we catch our breath, it's going to take forever. To the point where we're just not going to be able to do this. Please just kill it. Okay. It's dead. Yeah, the, the temperature fluctuations are just mental. It's water of what I'm not understanding is like it's water above us. Okay, we're starting to get our stamina back now. Okay. We're right here. Slowly but surely we're getting our stamina back. Okay. That's good, that's good. We can stop the panic. I am incredibly panicky right now. Because uh I'm I'm not I'm not liking this temperature fluctuation business. Right now it's 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 growing back up again, I think. If we take another step, we're down to zero. Take another step up to sixty. Are there certain squares that are bad and some that are good? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Let's see. Yes, so I think certain squares, for whatever reason, are hot. Other squares are cold. Let's use our night vision here. So, are we just going to... I honestly think... We, we don't have a pickaxe, do we? No, no. So we need, we need to try and figure this thing out. I'm going to go check it again. Okay. Got a giant black widow. We stumble and miss. Okay. We got him. Okay. Check it again. Dermatic. Great. We should we should be able to hit it. I, I know Dermatics are fast, but this is this is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> uh, right, screw this. Screw this. Okay. We could just end up spawning a whole heap of Dermatics. I'm kind of on board with that. Because then at least... Well, maybe we can get some other things to fight each other. Yellow switch. Come on. I'm just literally going at random now. Okay, we did it. We got it. We got it. <laughs> we got it. Let's go. Okay. We, can we breathe here? Is it incredibly hot here? No, it's cold here, apparently. Okay, it's cold in the square. We can deal with cold. Oh, wow. I... This has been... Interesting, to say the least. Is it is it consistent here? It is. And ahead of us, there are two items on the ground. Two artifacts. Artifacts that have yet to be screwed up by updates. Uh, there is a chance that, that still might happen. But if I don't update, maybe not. Let's see what is awaiting us here in this space. The Ring of Silent Necropolis. This is the Ring of the Silent Necropolis. Necropolis. As to what it does, we don't know. And then, beside it, we have the Dagger of Forbidden Death. It has three charges. Okay. First thing, we are going to pick up the Dagger of Forbidden Death. Okay. We feel unwell. We feel hungry. Okay, so, uh, it did something to us when we, <laughs> when we picked it up. We feel unwell. Right. Are we going to start vomiting? No, we, we seem to be okay. For the time being. We have one other here. The Ring of the Silent Necropolis. We pick it up. And no ill effects to start with. Okay, so we've retrieved two items from the bottom of this place and it seems here we are getting plagued by uh, <laughs> troubles however we are going to need our full power to be able to get out of here so let's turn on the even though we are hungry we're going to turn on the metabolic interchange we're also going to turn on the torch and ratchet 
and we are going to attempt to generate power. I know this seems a little crazy, just going backwards and forwards like this, but it's what we're going to have to do, because if we try and swim, we are just going to sink like a rock, because um, our swimming skill is terrible. We can't, we cannot swim. Our swimming is on zero. <laughs> um, so that's something they've kind of overlooked with Bran. He can, however, move a lot faster in water. As you were able to see, his move, movement speed was actually 200. Um, and that, I think, is because of something else that we have in here, but I can't remember off the top of my head what that it might have been. But yeah, so we do have the uh, respirator, but that, um, that consumes quite a bit of power. And um, yeah, there isn't anything else in here that we can consume with our internal furnace on really that's just going to give us a hundred the can we could eat our canteen i mean that's always an option right i mean if i can get us up to a thousand i'd be happy to give that a shot but it's going to be freaking tight so i tell you what i will be back in a moment okay we are out of breath and we are out of power for now so, we're going to go ahead and not use the mini flamethrower. <laughs> Turn that system off. Now, uh, we don't have any batteries or anything else like that that we can consume. We are just going to wait a while here, catch our breath, gain some more power, get a little bit more hungry, head back up here. Looks like, uh, for the most part, they killed each other. Good. It's a hot corpse, if I've ever seen one. A it was look <laughs> yeah see hot air so we can actually see some of the squares have hot air others don't so there is a whole heap of hot air in here and i'm thinking it's got to be coming down through the stairs it hasn't done that in the past but we have that consistent temperature it's just kind of turned this entire place into an oven so when we do look at moving back up we are going to have to have our thermal dissipation on while we move through here uh, actually no not here because this is the water stage yeah um really not too stoked about this um we are going to sink like a rock and there isn't too much i can do about that we are going to start running see if that'll help even a little bit that bloody sewer rat though let's kill that first of all okay our movement speed is good we'll turn our respirator on when we need to dive into the water yes we sink like a rock okay all right Stamina is going down. We turn our respirator on. Okay. All right. Our respirator is doing its trick. Our power is dropping. But we are going to be able to make it in one piece. Holy crap. Okay. We are Indiana Jones. And our repair nanobots are still turned on. Let's turn them off. Okay. All right. We are going to have a breather here. But let's just make sure that the square isn't terrible. It is hot air pretty much all, all down here. I don't think there's much that we can do to stop that. We just at least want to get a little bit of stamina back. The sooner that we get out of here, the better, really. Let's look at moving now. Thermal dissipation. Moving up. We don't really need to have night vision on here. And let's go ahead and start running. Okay, we're doing good. We're doing good. And out we go. Okay. Dissipation off flashlight on okay so we actually came up here weirdly enough i'm not going to complain or am i <laughs> we might not be able to get back the same way uh yeah looks like we're actually gonna have a little bit of trouble with this okay how is the temperature here not great not great okay but it looks like we can go this way obviously when we step on different squares different things happen what is this here? Is that a glass wall? Smash it. I don't care if there's an alarm. We are getting out of here. Up towards the top. We're very hot. Our breath is giving out. You can see that it's taking us a huge amount of time to just walk over each area. And finally, we make it back up the top. And once we are there at the top of it all, awaiting us is a freaking dermatic. Of course there is. Let's turn on that offensive defensive system. 
and just let it attack itself. We shock it. We did damage to it. Okay. And we can see that our power is going down, but it manages to kill itself. Thanks to our system protecting us. And lying, steaming on the snow, heat rising off his incredibly hot chassis. Bran starts to turn that snow to water, mixing with the blood and the ichor of the Dermatic. He sits, laying down, rather, on the ground, out of breath, trying to catch it as best he can, with two items clutched in the side of his armor. What do they do? <laughs> what, what are they going to do to us? Well, the Dagger of Forbidden Death. That made us a little sick when we started wielding it. Well, even just having it in our inventory. Let's go ahead and see if we can wield this thing. Okay. Oh dear. Okay, so. We can see that as we start to wield the Dagger of Forbidden Death, we feel a tickle of insanity. Our strength, our dex, our intelligence, our perception, all are minus by two. Our speed is minus by 20. It takes us a long time to wield the Dagger of Forbidden Death, but uh, something else that we noticed is that our steps stop making noise. We are completely silent while we move, and that is true. While wielding the Dagger of Forbidden Death, we are completely silent. Um, I can't see this doing any damage, so it, I don't know. There is a listener zombie that's nearby, or at least we were seeing one. We're still getting our power back. Okay, they are to the northwest. Okay, I think I saw them for a second there on the minimap. Yes. Where are you? Where are you? For real though, where are you? There you are. Oh, oh no. Oh, you son of a bitch. He killed the Chihuahua. I wanted him to be our friend. Okay, so we can see that it doesn't work like a traditional dagger. However, we can use it. Okay. That's interesting. Your body feels like jelly. From your position, you hear a disturbing scream from your dagger of forbidden death. What the hell does that mean? I don't know. I really don't. Okay. I don't like being bitten though, so I tell you what, we are going to stop wielding the dagger of forbidden death. Don't know what the scream was about. Um, let's just go start wielding our sword, huh? So we smash those suckers to death. Um, we are seeing a Dermatic though. That's not the Dermatic that we were fighting before, is it? I don't think so. Well, I guess that's that for now. I don't know what the effect of that was, but that's terrifying. That blade was screaming in our hands. That's not cool. No, it's a different Dermatic, okay. Well, let's move back towards here, and we still have one other artifact to investigate. And obviously, as you can see, it has charges, so it, it did something as to what it did. We, well, um, I don't know. Um, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, our steps are making noise and everything like that again. Okay, so we are going to wear the ring of silent, of the silent necropolis. Okay. We feel a tickle of insanity. A cloud of smoke appears. A glow of light forms around you. Okay. A tickle of insanity. Sure. Do we notice anything else? Okay, we produce smoke. Is that, is that it? <laughs> I, I mean, there is a glow of light around us. I don't know what the light is doing, but um, we produce smoke. <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, I can't see any other effects it's having on our stats at the moment, 
But um, yeah, okay, we're going to go ahead and take that off. But that's the two tickles of insanity that we felt today. I'm feeling ticklish. Oh boy. Well, that, guys and gals, is going to wrap us up for today's episode. That has, uh, that's been two episodes of um, intriguing hijinks. And this one was one of uh, frustration and fear. And I think that's probably going to be the name of today's episode. Because we've felt a lot of it today. After all of that, though, we are still alive. We're still in one piece. We managed to make it out of there, and that's what counts. It's very easy to panic in that moment and fear losing it all. And that fear was most certainly real. For now, though, that is going to wrap up our episode. Thank you so much for joining me. I have been Rykon. You have all been awesome. And until next time, stay tuned. Finally, I'd like to extend a great big thank you to our Legion on Patreon, who continue to make this content possible. 